R tutorial number three, working with R. In this tutorial, we will cover setting the working directory in R, reading in data files to R, and creating an R script or syntax file. Setting the working directory. When starting R, you want to set R's working directory. And the working directory is the first place that R searches for files. Files produced by R are also saved in that directory. The working directory should be where you have saved the data and syntax files that you plan to use during this R session. So during this R session in R Studio, you can set the working directory by going to session at the top of the page, choosing set working directory, and you can choose to source file location. By choosing to source file location, you are setting the working directory to the file location of the current script that you have open over here in the source editor. So if we go down to the bottom of the page at the console, we can see that we've set the working directory to the file where this example lab code for R is saved. You can also set the session working directory manually by going to session again, set working directory, and choosing directory. That will then bring up the menu with all of your files on your computer so you can scroll through and figure out where you want to save your current R syntax and set your working directory. And once you have that done, you can then read in the data files that you have in this location. The file that you will be working with this semester is a comma separated values file or a CSV file. Thus, in this section we will learn how to upload data from a file in the CSV format. Files in the CSV format are ordinary text files. They can be created manually or come about as a result of converting data stored in a different format into this particular format. Excel and other electronic spreadsheet programs offer a convenient way to produce, browse, and edit these CSV files. So let's first use Excel to look at our CSV file. And I have this file open for you here in Excel already. Opening a CSV file by a spreadsheet program displays a spreadsheet with the content of the file, as you can see here. Values in the cells of the spreadsheet can be modified directly. However, when saving, you should pay attention to save the file in the CSV format. Similarly, new CSV files may be created by entering the data in an empty spreadsheet. The first row, as you see here, should include the different names of the variables, preferably as a single character string with no empty spaces. And the following rows may contain the data values that are associated with this variable. So as you can see here, you have the variable names and all the values going down these columns here. And when saving, the spreadsheet should be saved in the CSV format by the use of either the save by name formula or here, as you see at the top of the page, using save as to save this as a comma separated values file. We already have it saved here, so we won't resave it, but you want to make sure you have the CSV extension when you're resaving any of these files. After saving a file with the data in a directory, you are going to need to tell R where the file is located in order to be able to read it. This is why we want to set our working directory to the one that we will be saving our data files in. Once that is done, we can then move on to read in the data into R. The function read.csv takes as an input argument the address of a CSV file and produces as output a data frame object with the content of that file. So notice that in this case, the address of the file is placed between double quotes. So we have ab.survey.csv in between double quotes up here. If the file is located in the working directory, then giving the name of the file as an address is sufficient. Otherwise, you are going to need to use the full file name here in this read.csv function. And generally, when you read in a data file, you want to give it a name. In this case, we are calling ours data. And in addition, most of the time you will also want to indicate header equals true, as you see up here. This statement tells R to use the values in the first row of the data set as the names for each of the variables. So let's read in the data and see what happens. We can see down here that we received no warnings, so we read in our data OK. Now we can also look at the dimensions of the data and get a summary of the data too. So if we do that, we can see that our dimensions include 1,144 cases for 15 variables, and we can also get a summary of each of those variables and some of the basic summary statistics here. In addition to this, we can also look at our data. So if you go over to the workspace, you'll see that our data set is there. Then if you double click on it, 
the data will appear in your source window, which you can see over here. Just like the data set that we saw in Excel, we have the different columns for variables and rows for cases. And the columns of our data frames represent variables, or measurements recorded for each of the subjects in the sample. R associates with each variable a type that characterizes the content of the variable. The two major types are qualitative data, which R describes as factors, and quantitative data, which R describes as numeric. Factors are the result of categorizing or describing attributes of a population. So hair color, blood type, ethnic origin, location, sex, work in this case. These are all examples of qualitative data. Qualitative data are generally described by words or letters, which you can see here. And in many cases, they are often less used than quantitative data because there's less that we can use them for. We've discussed this in class as well. Quantitative data are always numbers and are usually the data of choice because there are many methods available for analyzing such data. Quantitative data are the result of counting or measuring attributes of a population. So the amount of money someone has, that person's pulse weight, the number of adults in a household, the number of kids in the household, or a person's age, for example. These all show us examples of quantitative data. And as you can see here, they are summarized with numbers and not words. So we have just seen how to set the working directory, read in data into R, and then look at the data. Now we have one more beginning step, and that beginning step is going to include creating the R script. So now for the final one of our beginning steps, creating an R script or syntax file. So let's first start by getting our data out of the way over here so we can see what we actually have right now for a script or syntax file. And now we can talk about the different ways that we can enter commands into R. There are two general ways to tell R to do something. For the first one, we can type our commands into the console down here. So for example, I can type summary data as my command, hit enter, and then it's going to give me a summary of our data set that we've seen already. We can do that down there, but we can also type our commands into the console up here. So I have some example code, and I've already typed summary data a couple of times. So when I have something that's already typed in my source code, I can highlight it, and if I'm using a Mac, I can press command enter, but I can also go up here and click run. And run does the exact same thing as typing into the console does. It runs things down here, where we again get a second summary of our data, as you can see. And although typing commands into the console works, I recommend using the source editor for your commands, primarily because it allows you to organize and save them in addition to telling R to do something. So for every project, you, have a, you should have a separate syntax code file. In RStudio, you can create a new file by going to File at the top, and then you can go to New and click on R Script. This is going to open a new source file and give it an untitled title, as you can see up here. So that's going to give you your new untitled R Script. And you also want to save this script. You can then go back to File, choose Save As, and you'll have the option of giving it a title and figuring out where on your computer you want to save it. So for example, we can save this one as example code 2, and we always want to remember to include .r at the end so it knows that we are using our syntax files in this particular case. And as you can see, I've, ex I've, sa I've then saved my example code to .r up here. So you now know how to create a source file which you'll use to organize and save all your commands to R. Now you should be ready to go and start analyzing your data.